So we're just gonna start with our nice strong standing posture, grounded through the feet, just noticing that connection of the feet to the ground, really, really important, a great way to start the session. And then we're just gonna switch side to side, lifting up through the sides of the feet, the boom mobility, just waking everything up, warming everything up and mobilizing. Fabulous. We're going to settle back to centre and we're going to lift up through the toes and just encourage that spread of the toes. If you um, don't have any shoes and socks on, then it's quite nice to just look down and see what's going on through there. And then relax down and then we're just going to shift forward and back. So as we come forward, notice the balls of the feet, the toes, we're gently pressing down and then we're shifting back to the heels. So the further we take it up onto the toes, I want you to really focus on the pressing down of the big toe, and then we shift that back. And again, just awakening everything, core stabilization system. The undersides of the feet, right up through to the calves. Once more, and then we relax that down. Okay, so we're just gonna roll through the shoulders now. We're gonna glide forward, up and over, and then open through the chest. Glide forward, so we're rounding through the upper back, up and over, and then open through the chest. Again, another great way just to start the session. A really simple exercise that you can do on a daily basis just helps to release any tension we may be carrying through the upper body. I'm going to do one more. Open over and open through the chest. So we're going to hold the hands or clasp the fingers behind the back and just lift and open through that chest. And if we can, we're just going to gently draw the hands away from the bottom. Not an excessive movement, just support. Just lifting those hands, lengthening through the spine, opening through the chest. Relax down. Okay, so we're going to widen through the stance. Okay, and just give the hips a little wiggle, hands on the hips, just making sure that the movement is predominantly coming from those hips. And then we're going to circle through the hips. So four points, we take it to the side, open the hips forward, side, and then scoop it round. So if you're carrying any tension through the adductors to the inner thigh, then this is great to create that release. Also, if there's any um restriction through the hip joint itself, then we might get a little bit of popping and clicking, that's okay. So just really take it to the end point, side, open forward, side, scoop it round. And then we're going to change direction, forward, side, scoop it round. And with this, just don't worry about what it looks like. I want you to think about what it feels like. And the key focus are the ball and socket joints, the hips and the pelvis. Scoop that round. Forward, side, scoop it round. Okay. From here, we're going to maintain that wide stance. Okay, we're going to... First of all, take the hands behind the back and either hold them or clasp the fingers together. Okay, we're not forcing the shoulders back, but we're, we're really kind of asking the body for a nice posture, an optimal posture. The shoulder blades are hugging the rib. From here, we're going to hinge through the hips. So we're going to hinge through the hips and draw it back to centre. A little squeeze through the glutes at the top. So we hinge through the hips. Come up into that standing position, little squeeze through the glutes at the top. As we do this, we try not to shift the weight 
back on the heels and sit the bottom back. Remember the tripod of the foot, big toe, little toe, heel. We are hinging through those hips. Again, we're not forcing the shoulders back, but we're creating a nice optimal posture. We're going to do one more. And then we're going to take it halfway. Okay, so settle into that posture. We're activating the spinal muscles. Okay, we're relaxing one arm down, one arm comes, comes behind the back. And we're just focusing on the dangling arm. And we just want to relax it right through to the fingertips. And then we're just going to allow that arm to circle. Yeah, so it's not a big circle, it's a little. And as we do that, we're encouraging that heaviness of the arm. Just relaxing it right down to the fingertips. A nice strong position with the rest of the body. And then we change direction. If it's easier, rather than the circles, you can just let that arm swing. Okay, but we're relaxing right down to the fingertips, just getting that nice um, mobilization through the shoulder. And then we bring it back up into a standing position, hands behind the back, we tip halfway forward, and then we do the other side. So one hand behind the back, the other arm dangling forward, just relax it. Okay, really focus on this arm. Okay, relax right down to the fingertips. And then we allow that to either circle or we allow the arm to swing. Just focusing on that relaxation. And this can be, you know, if you carry intention around the neck, those shoulders, this can be quite challenging to really kind of relax through that arm because the body will rip. It just takes practice. We change direction. Just notice how the arm feels right now through hand and fingertips. Okay, we bring it into a standing posture. We narrow the stance and we're going to take it down into. Um, oh, we're going to take it down into the mat. Okay, so. We're going to move through a roll down. The first exercise we're going to do is um, the cat cow. So if you need to do this in a standing position rather than kneeling, you can either lean on something and focus on the curve through the spine in a standing position, or you can rest the hands on the knee and do exactly the same. Okay. So we're moving to a roll down, strong standing posture. Chin to the chest, and we're going to roll down through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Okay, so this is really nice to create some release through the back of the body. Okay, so remember we're not sitting back through onto the heels, the tripod of the foot matters, the hinge through the hip, and again we're relaxing right down to the fingertips right to the crown of the head. Just settle into that position for a moment. A couple of nice big full breaths, just releasing any tension we're holding on to. Now, as I said, we're going to do the cat cow. So if standing is your position, you're going to roll this back up into standing. If not, we're going to bend through those knees and hips and we're going to take it into the four point needle position. Okay, so we're going to start with a cat cow, really, really nice, fine. We're going to draw the belly button to the sky, lift up to the chest bone, press down through the heels of the hands, and tuck under through the tailbone. And we're going to rush this position. And then we're going to take it into the cow. So belly button down towards the ground, tailbone back, lift through the chest. Just notice how that feels through the spine. Okay, we go again all the way up. Belly button to the sky. Lift up through the chest bone. 
you slip through the belly button, put your tailbone under, relax that chin down towards the chest. And then we go into the cow, belly button down towards the mat, tailbone back, lift the chest. We're trying to keep those arms straight, but again, just think about how the exercise feels for you. We're going to do that once more. Belly button all the way up to the sky, bridge through those shoulders, press down through the heels of the hands, get the tailbone under, and then we take it all the way down into the cap. Amazing. Okay. So settle back to center. We're going to do the thread the needle, but the, a variation of thread the needle. So the hand comes at the side of the head. We lead with the elbow, elbow to the sky, and then the elbow, and then the hand is going to come down and through. Okay. So elbow to the sky, and then the hand threads through. So we continue with that again in a standing position. We can lean against uh, the back of the chair or the kitchen worktop, whatever works. And we're going to take it around and through. Okay. So there's always a way around exercises to modify them to suit you. Okay, we're going to do one more of those. Elbow to the sky, through the arm, through, and then we're going to switch to the other side. So, hand at the side of the head, leading with the elbow, elbow to the sky, and then we thread the hand through. We take the elbow to the sky, and then thread the hand through. To the sky, the hand through. Again, notice how it feels through the body. Once more. Amazing. And then from here, we're going to take ourselves down onto our tummy. Okay. So just take a moment to notice the connection of the body to the ground. Okay, notice the position of the pelvis. Okay, making sure that it feels nice and level. And as we do this, we're trying to keep a fairly neutral neck position. So we're not looking straight out in front of us. We're glancing down towards the ground or the hands. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to do in this position, really simple spinal extension. Okay, so with this, the first thing we do is gently squeeze through the glutes, okay, to stabilize the pelvis. And then we lift the front of those forearms and elbows, and then we roll it back down. So the first thing we do is engage the glutes, the bum cheeks, and then we lift. Now, depending on how this exercise feels for you, will depend, be dependent on how far you push it. Okay, because what we can do is start to lift the hands rather than the elbows and forearms, and then we roll it back down. Okay, we reset with each one. Stabilize the pelvis, draw that up, and then we roll that back down. So we squeeze through the glutes, draw that up into the spinal extension, and then roll that down. We're going to do one more of those. Squeeze through the glutes into that spinal extension and we roll it down. Okay, from here we're just going to push that up, bring it into that child's pose position, and just take a moment into that in that child's pose position. So we're just having a little bit of stretch out through that lower back, through the shoulders. And again, this position, you can modify it to suit your body. So it may be that you lift the bottom away from the heels, rest the head on the hands. 
Okay, maybe that you draw your arms down nice where the wall is. And we're just gonna take a moment to breathe. Some nice big full breaths. Just relaxing down through the body, keep that breath out. Notice in how the body feels through the ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, hands, through the spine. From here, we're going to bring that back up and down into the front lying position again. Okay. So from here, we're going to do um, a shoulder exercise. So really good for shoulder activation and engagement. Okay. So think about how it feels for you and just work through the range of movement that feels good. Okay. Remember, repetition is key and then the body will give you a little bit more. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just make sure we are free to kind of move those arms so we're not, we're not pressing down through them. We're going to get a little squeeze through the glutes, just very gentle to stay by the pelvis. And then we're going to take the hands and the head and just gently lift with those elbows. Okay. Now it might be that that's the movement you're going to do is relax the arms down, hand to the side of the head, lift the elbows. Okay, if we want more movement from this, we want to challenge the body a little bit more. And you can see my glance is down towards the carpet, yeah? It's a nice optimal neck position. So the hands come up behind the, the head, the ears, lift with the elbows. And then we glide the fingertips straight forward to those arms are over uh, in front of us. The hands are in front of us and the palms are facing one another. Okay, we relax that down, glide the hands back in. Okay, this is our level two. Hands behind the head, lift through those elbows. Then glide those fingertips forward, drive them forward, palms facing one another. But the hands have got that gap, yeah, so the shoulder width apart. We relax the arms down and we glide them back. Okay, if we want more from this, hands at the side of the head, lift through those elbows, glide those fingertips forward. The hands, the palms are facing down now, and we're gonna glide those arms out to the side and round. And then we flip the palms so they're facing the sky and they come behind the back. Okay? If you're in charge, take a look at the video. Okay? We reverse that. Okay? So we draw the arms down. The palms are facing the ground. Okay? The arms come out to the side. Palms facing one another. Hands come to the side of the head, we lift through the elbows. Okay, so just take a moment to relax down, relax through the shoulders, and then we go again. Hands at the side of the head, lift through the elbows. Drive those fingertips forward, palms facing one another. The palms face down, the arms come out to the side, kind of like the angel, kind of, if you were doing a snow angel. Opposite way around. Okay. We then flip the palms to the face of the facing sky and the hands come behind the back. Okay. We reverse that. Hands come down by towards the sides, palms facing down, the hovering above the ground, the arms come out to the side. We then wing it with palms facing one another at shoulder distance. Hands come to the ears, elbows to the sky. And then we relax everything down. Really, really great exercise for the shoulders, for shoulder mobility, for shoulder activation and engagement. Okay? And you can do any part of that movement. Okay? It doesn't have to be the whole sequence. It can be 
just having those arms down by your side and lifting and lowering. So you can take little snippets of that and work with what is right for you. Okay, from here, we're just going to do one more exercise in this position. We're going to do that scorpion stretch and release. Okay, so toes to the sky, lift up through the thigh, we lift that up and over, we cross the body. Okay, we roll back through the pelvis and relax that leg down. So the other side, toes to the sky, lift up through the thigh, the leg crosses over. So there's two ways you can go about this, okay? So from what the first set that I did, the first repetitions I did, I am using my arms to assist the movement, okay? Toes to the sky, lift up through the thigh and cross that over. So the chest is lifting, Okay, on one side I'm lifting up through the elbow. Okay, so you can see that it's a nice fluid movement. I'm utilizing the whole of my body. Alternatively, the upper body remains grounded as that leg comes across. And you can see that reduces my range of movement. Okay. But I want you to think about what feels good for you. Toes to the sky, lift up through the thigh, the arm crosses. Okay, so you can either keep the upper body grounded or you can use it to assist the movement. We're going to do one more on each side. So lift up and over. We draw that back in. Okay, from here we're going to draw ourselves up back into that child's pose position. Bottom towards the heels, arms out in front, relaxing everything down towards the ground. And we take a moment to breathe. Again, you can modify this position to work with whatever suits you. Nice big full breaths. Just relaxing the body down towards the ground. Okay. We bring ourselves up and out of that and we're going to take it into a seated position. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take a wide stance with the feet. Okay, and we're going to do that um I said leg. Okay, <laughs> I can't remember who taught who said that, but anyway, it's a split leg position. Okay. We start with it wide, so I want you to just work through a range of movement that feels good for you. It doesn't have to be huge. The goal is to be able to get both legs grounded and the seat bones grounded as well. Okay? We lift it up and over. If that's quite challenging, you might find that you are leaning back into it, and that's okay. Again, the goal is to be able to do that and sit nice and tall, okay? You can move the feet a little bit to adjust yourself, that's okay. We're just creating that windscreen wipe of motion where the knees lift up and over. So incredible for hip health. And with repetition, yeah, this becomes an exercise that feels pretty straightforward. But you'll be surprised at how many people struggle with this and find it very, very challenging. Okay, so fluency and movement is key. Use the hands to assist you. And again, to challenge the body a little bit more. You can work on being able to do that hands free. Okay. So again, it's, that's a good progression. The goal is what we aim to get to. Okay, amazing. So we'll take it over to one side, that split leg position, and all we're going to do is just add a little bit more in where we're going to tip through the hips and relax those arms down forward. 
Okay, we lift up and out, we switch it over, we draw that forward, we switch, we rest that down. Again, it's just an addition, so you don't have to add this in if it doesn't feel good, but it's just a really kind of beneficial little thing just to create some nice release around the hips. Okay, we're going to do one more on each side. And then from there, we're going to take those legs out in front, but big grounded knees bent. The hands are coming down behind us, and if we can, we're placing the fingertips so they're facing away from us, they're pointing backwards. We settle the shoulders in a nice position, so open through the chest, shoulder blades are hugging the rib cage, and we've got that upside down W position. So, a great position again, if you can do this one today, just to open out through the chest. If you do a lot of work at a desk, driving, or in that forward position, opening through the chest is crucial. Okay, so from here, we're going to turn the fingertips out. If this is super comfortable for you, you can keep the fingertips pointed backwards. Personally, I like to point the fingertips out. I'm going to ground the hand, and I'm going to lift through the chest. Okay, so we're going to lift the bottom off the ground and up towards the sky. If that is too much, okay, all I want you to do is focus on pressing down through the hands and taking more weight through the shoulders, okay? And that can look like, um, you know, not even lifting the, the bottom off the ground. It's just pressing down through the heels and the hands and taking more weight through the shoulders. Okay, the goal is to be able to set the shoulders in a good position, ground the feet, ground the hands, lift up through the pelvis, a little squeeze through the glutes, and then control that movement down. Okay, so bridging the gap with this one is reducing the range of movement. So I want you to find what works for you, okay? But kind of the, the end goal is to be able to lift that pelvis up towards the sky and then control the movement down. So remember, if that's not within grasp at this moment, just press down through those knees, the hands, increase the load through the wrists, shoulders. So really great for the spine really great for the shoulders. Maybe one more of those. Down. And then we're just going to sit, sit up nice and tall. Take those legs out in front of us, lengthen through the spine. Okay, so the first thing we want to be able to do is create the L shape through the body without the need of resting on the hands. Okay, if you're not here yet, use the hands to help support you and create that L shape. Okay, but this is the goal it's to sit like this fairly comfortably, lengthening through the spine. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to work on hips. Okay, um, really, a really great exercise to strengthen up around the knees as well. Okay, so again, you can use the fingertips and the upper body to help you. We're going to lift up through one foot, and it's kind of like hopping over the hedge or over the fence. So it comes up, over, and out. Okay, and then we go again. So we lift it up, over, and out. Okay, so from a front position, this is where we're at. Okay, so we come back, we lift up, 
over halfway. Okay, foot over feet back together. Okay, and we're going to go to the other side now. So single sided exercise, notice how it feels from one side to the other. So we lift foot over and out. Okay, foot over and out. Maintaining length through the spine, use the hands accordingly. Okay, we come back into centre. Foot over halfway. And then foot over, feet back to centre. Okay, we switch to the other side. It comes up over halfway. Comes up over and out. Lengthening through that heel is quite a nice kind of way to optimise the movement. Okay, so we're just imagining nice length there. We come back to centre. Up, over, halfway. And then it comes up, over, and centre. We're going to do one more with this other side. So we lift up, over, halfway. And then up, over, and back. Okay, maintain the length through the spine, there's no rush with this one. We go again. Up, over, halfway. And then up, and together. Amazing. Okay, just bend into the knees and hug the knees so we're getting that nice rounding through the spine. Relax through the shoulders, relax through the neck. Couple of nice big full breaths. Okay. The next day exercise is going to be the bottom walk. So with this one, we could resume that L shape again. Okay, again, the hands can be there to assist you. So one heel is gliding away from you, it's moving away from you. The bottom gently lifts and it walks forward. Okay, same with the other side, it glides. Yep, so it can be made much more fluent with the, with the assistance of the hands. Okay, so if you feel you need a little bit more support through the spine as you do this, and you want to really focus on fluency of movement, okay, use the hands to help. Okay. And the, the goal is, to do it hands free. I find when I do it hands free, I get a little bit more of a shift through the body. Okay, so that's what I'm working on is optimizing and minimizing the shift as I move. And then we're going to bring it back. Okay, so it's the exact opposite now. The heel is driving towards you, is moving towards you, and the bottom walks back. Okay, so the bottom is moving away from me. So focusing on fluency of movement. If you're on carpet, um, it is a little bit more challenging. Um, whereas if you're on a smooth surface or a mat, it's a little bit easier to get that movement. You've got a little less friction to work with. Okay, so we're going to do one more of those. So. Roll the heel forward, the bottom walks forward. Again, it's efficiency of movement. Okay, and then we take it back. So, the next exercise, we are going to swizzle around, take it onto our front again, into that front lying position. Okay, it's one exercise in this position, and then we're going to do a little bit of stretch and release. Okay, so again, an incredible exercise for hips. So, we use the arms in a position that where we feel well supported through the upper body, because the movement's coming from the lower body. 
Okay, from here, we're going to lift up through the leg, okay, and just, just have a look at what movement I'm creating, okay? The knee is coming out and round, and then we place that down. So that position in itself feels quite nice if there's any tightness through the adductors, um, the rotators of the hip, okay? From there, you might find that you just need to glide that back, okay? But the goal is to be able to lift, draw it round, okay? Lift, draw it round, okay? So even for me, because this is a fairly new exercise for me, it's quite challenging just because the body needs to time to kind of get used to it and become stronger and more capable. Okay, so we lift the leg, we draw it round, and relax that down. Okay, if you need to just slide it back, you can. If you want to lift, then we get the arms in a good position. Lift, slide it back, round. Okay, so I've just done three repetitions on one side, I'm going to go to the other side now. If you've alternated, keep alternating. You've done the same as me then change, okay? So we lift, and we glide it round. Okay, so for me, it actually feels much easier on my right side to do this. Okay, we either slide it back round without we lift, or we lift and glide it back round. Okay. We lift, take that knee out to the side, relax it down. We either slide it back down so the legs are coming up the ground, or we lift and draw it back round. Okay, we're going to do one more. Lift, glide it round. We lift, glide it back. Okay, maybe. So if we bring ourselves all the way out of that. And we take ourselves so we're lying on our back. Okay, so we just roll down onto the mat, hug the knees to the chest, give them a little wiggle, massage that lower back into the mat. Okay, from here we're either going to take hold of um the underneath uh, the hamstrings, so the underneath of the of the leg, and we're just going to press the hand, the feet to the sky, or we can take hold of those feet, and then we're just going to press towards the sky. And just take a moment to breathe. Okay, and we relax that down. Okay, so we're going to do an exercise now, great for hamstring um, and sciatic nerve. So we're going to straighten through one leg. We're going to draw one leg towards and take hold of that hamstring. Okay, we're going to stretch, we're going to point through the toes. Okay, in this position. Okay, and then we're going to extend through the leg. We're going to draw the toes towards us. And then we repeat that in reverse. Take the toes to the sky, bend through the knee, relax the foot, or draw the toes towards you. Okay, we go again. So we, we usually do this one, but we don't involve the foot. So it's just this bend and straighten through the knee. This time, we're just adding a little bit more detail to it. We point the toes. Take the toes to the sky. We draw the toes towards us. So heel to the sky. We point the toes. We bend the knee. We relax the foot or draw the toes towards us. If you're unsure, look at the video. We point the toes. We straighten the leg, toes to the sky. We draw the toes towards us. We point the heel to the sky. Okay, and we reverse that. 
toes to the sky, bend through the knee, relax foot. We're going to do one more on this side. We point the toes. Straighten the leg, toes to the sky. Draw the toes towards us, heel to the sky. Point the toe, draw it back in. Amazing. So we switch to the other side now. So the leg we've just worked is grounded and straight. We hold the hamstring of the other leg, we relax that leg down. The first thing we do is point the toes. We take the toes to the sky. We draw the toes towards us and point the heel to the sky. And reverse it. Toes to the sky. Bend the knee, relax the foot. We go again. Point the toes. Toes to the sky. Draw the toes towards us, heel to the sky, point through the toes, and draw that in. Relax the foot. So it's really interesting to see what's going from it on side to side. Okay, so for me on my left side, I'm carrying some tightness through the front of my foot. Okay, so point through the toes, toes to the sky. That's quite an intense feeling through the front of my foot. Draw the toes towards me, heel to the sky, and then we reverse it. Toes to the sky, bend through the knee, relax the foot. Amazing. Just hook those knees to the chest. Give them a little wiggle, massage that lower back into the mat. Okay. We straighten one leg out like we've just done, knee to the chest, but this time the other, uh, the opposite arm to the knee to the chest is going to draw that knee across the body. The other arm we take out to the side and we ground the shoulder. Okay, and we're just going to use that leg as a lever so we can roll through the pelvis and we're trying to maintain that grounding of the shoulder. Just hold that position. We breathe. And then we roll it back. Okay, we switch to the other side. Okay, so grounded leg, knee to the chest, opposite hand to the knee to the chest. We use that to draw the leg over. The other arm goes out, we ground the shoulder. We use that leg as a lever. Maintaining that grounded shoulder. We hold that position and we breathe. Okay. Draw it back to center. Both knees bend, arms out to the side. We're going to lower the knees over to the side. Thinking about fluency of movement, and again the grounding of the shoulders, we roll the knees back to center and then over to the other side. Now, to get a little bit more from this today, as we roll, or once we've rolled the knees over to the side, we're going to straighten the top leg. So the thighs are still level, but that top leg is straight. We bring the foot back in and then we roll back the centre. So knees over to the side. We straighten through that top leg. Gives us a nice little bit of overpressure. We bring the foot back in. We roll back the centre. We go. We straighten. Top leg. And then the knee. We roll back to center. There we go. Straighten the leg. We bring it in and roll back. We're going to do one more on each side. We 
roll back to centre, one final repetition, and we will be straight in that top leg. We bring it in, and we draw it back. Okay, from here, we're going to take it into the figure four stretch movement. So the ankle of one leg just comes across and rests on the upper thigh, so just, a bit, just below the knee. We can either keep the foot grounded and then just press that knee away from us, okay? Trying to keep that pelvis neutral so we're not shifting through the pelvis, it's just the taking that knee out. Okay, if we want more from this, we can use the hands and take, lift that grounded foot to take hold of the hamstring and support the leg via kind of scooping those arms around and holding on to that hamstring. Okay, if you need, if this is too much for you and you need a bit more support, if you have the, the space or the, the wall space, placing the foot on a wall or resting the foot on a chair, okay, is a really great option. We hold this position. If you want more from this, instead of holding the hamstring, you can scoop the arm around and hold on to the shin. Okay, there's quite a big difference there. So, you know, have a, have a little go at it. If you feel that's right for you. And we breathe and relax into it. We're going to switch to the other side. Okay, so the ankle comes across that thigh. We're using the hand to press that knee away. If you're not sure, just take a look at the video. So press that knee away if you want more. We scoop the arms around and take hold of that hamstring. We relax that. Okay, if we need to, the supporting leg and foot, we can rest it on a wall or over a chair. If you want more from this, you can scoop those arms around, take hold of the shin, and then press that back down. And to breathe and relax into it. Relax back down. Okay, we turn over onto the other side now. Underneath arm, untuck through the shoulder. The arm is at eye level. We're going to do those nice rotation. We're going to focus on the, um, the big full circle, okay, because we get this nice opening through the rib cage as well as the rotation through the chest and or opening through the chest rotation through the back. Knees are stacked, hips are stacked, top arm is moving um, with the assistance of everything from the pelvis upwards. We reach as far forward as we possibly can. So I'm getting this nice stretch and release through the shoulder. Okay, then the fingertips are going to stay as close to the ground as possible as the arm comes uh, overhead. The arm glides past the ear. And then we rotate that round. So again, the fingertips are staying as close to the ground as possible. And we bring the arm back down and we go again. So if your mobility means that it's not quite as straightforward as that, okay, the reach forward is usually pretty okay. The hand coming up and over is usually pretty okay. Okay, we get a nice opening through the rib cage. If the shoulder starts to take the brunt of this, we took the hand in so it's on the shoulder and we lead with the elbow. So we're shortening the lever, we're encouraging more rib movement through the mid back, the lower back, mid back, and rib cage. Okay, so it shouldn't feel painful through the shoulder. 
everything from the pelvis upwards is playing its role and allowing this to become a super efficient movement. Okay, and some really nice release through the connective tissue, through the fascia. And again, some lovely glide through the connective tissue. Nice release, especially on this rotation back. Nice release through the chest, which can often become quite tight. We're going to do one more of those. And over. And then we're going to lift up and over and switch to the other side. Okay. So we untuck the shoulder, the arm is at eye level. You can rest your head on a cushion if you like. Knees and hips stand. The top arm is moving. We glide it all the way forward. We reach, 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 reach. Fingertips stay as close to the ground as possible. The arm comes overhead. It glides past the ear. And then we rotate that round. Glide it all the way forward. The hand comes up, up, and over. We glide it around. And then we reach forward. So remember if there's any strain through the shoulder, we tuck the hand into the shoulder and we lead with the elbow. We're going to do one more of those. And then we take ourselves into a nice comfortable position, wherever that may be, and we're just going to take a moment to breathe. So the first thing we do is just notice the breath, how it feels. Our breath is a really, really powerful tool um, that can help us switch the body into a state of calm. And what that looks like is nice, deep, Full, relaxed breath and creating a slightly longer breath, breath out, sorry, than the breath in. It's a longer breath out than the breath in. So that's going to be your focus, is creating that deep, full breath and creating a slightly, or oh, a longer breath out than the breath in. You should find it useful to add a count to the breath. So whether that's to help you focus or whether it's to help you create that rhythmical breath, give it a little bit more structure. Then you can breathe in for the count of four and you can breathe out for either the count of six or eight. The goal is to be able to breathe in for the count of four and out for the count of eight. With that breath out, we're just 
relaxing the body down towards the ground, just allowing it to melt down a little bit more. Notice the connection of the body to the breath. So we're going to bring ourselves back to our natural breath. I'm just going to give the fingers a wiggle, the toes a wiggle, circle through those wrists and ankles. If you've had your eyes shut, we're just going to open them. And then we're going to bring ourselves into that seated position. We're going to take our legs out in front of us. We're going to take the hands down behind us, flat on the ground. We're going to hook the shoulder blades to the rib cage and open into the chest. A couple of nice big breaths just to finish off through the session. Just to finish off the session for you. Well done and just stitch. Thank you.